I'm Peter Haddock and I've just witnessed something incredible, a head-to-head -head earlier today with these two machines. They are identical bar one thing, folks. That's a diesel and that's an electric and I'm on the green team for a reason because I want to win and believe me, I was the winner, James, <laughs> because we had a head-to-head -head test Exactly the same setup of the machines, exactly the same, apart from the power is different, isn't it? Correct, yeah. So this is our electric uh, 922F, based off our highly successful diesel 922F, <laughs> we'll that. which is sixth generation. But yes, you're correct. This has got a fully electric powertrain. One of the key differences you would have seen is the power and speed yes. of the machine. Yeah. So this machine has got 165 kilowatts of power. Right. This machine has got 116 kilowatts, and this is by no means a small amount, <laughs> no, but no. this is uh, a very, very powerful machine. So it's actually about 42% uh, greater in power than, uh, than the uh, diesel variant. And what was noticeable, folks, is electric power we know is instantaneous. Yeah. So it is like, it's moving around faster. It's it, when you hit the go button, it's like, it's go. You know what I mean? It is. And we saw the way that it was doing the job and you know the, the excavator operators both same standards but equally we also learned from your discussion as you you were talking to us about it as the thing was happening about the controllability from the operator's perspective how they can use the latest controls on the electric as well that's important isn't it exactly so i think there's two key points on what you've said the first one is efficiency yeah. So with the electric powertrain, you're nearly at 94% efficiency. So wow. much, much better. And then secondly, controllability. We've listened to what our customers and our operators have said, and we've made it so that you can adjust key machine parameters in the machine display. So you can adjust your hydraulic priorities, your joystick response, and your joystick sensitivity, all from the display, because we understand that Every application is different. You yeah, could yeah. be grading, you could be loading, or you could just be doing standard trenching. So we understand that the duties are different. And so that makes a difference, folks, when you're in a race. And um, there's certainly uh, that did make a difference because the setup is easier to do. But when you're talking about electrification, when, and we're here they, at the BEV experience, and we're talking about the batteries, we're talking about the machines, and we're talking about the beyond piece, which is like, how do we go and transition? Well, we've just seen there the capabilities are greater. And we've also seen that it's been working all day and it's still got loads of charge left on it. Mm. And we're, we're not saying that it's perfect for every application. The diesel is required for certain things, but the right application, the right job site, you can now do things faster and more efficiently. 100%. So with this machine, we'd expect between eight to 10 hours working time, yeah. depending on the application. And the point we're at now, this is our fourth generation of this electric wow. variant. Right. So we started this journey over 10 years ago. Yeah. And the point we're at now is refining the machine to optimize that runtime. We've got the power, yeah, but now yeah. we're optimizing the runtime. So say for example, this machine would have been running in P10 during the race. Right. To keep up with this machine, we could have been in standard eight. Ooh. So quite a big difference there. And when we talk about this sort of thing, you know, I, I talked about this for a long time. We've got power modes, we've got eco modes, we've got all these different modes. And when everybody wants to do power work, they just go straight to power. Well, that's generally using more diesel from, the, from that perspective. And in this perspective, you just don't need that. Exactly. You know? And so it really is gauging the performance of the machine and optimizing that to the, the chasket hand to minimize the amount of energy or power that goes into it, isn't it? Correct. So we've had a lot of operators testing these machines uh, across Europe and also in the UK. And that's the main feedback that we've found is people say, actually, I don't need to turn the machine up to maximum power. I can get what I need from an average setting. Yeah. And not forgetting, folks, these are big machines, so it's not just buckets you're going to be putting on these machines as well, is it? You know, you're going to be putting grabs and all sorts of different things onto these machines in the future uh, as the, the, the methodology changes and to the applications you're going 100%, into. 100%. And the, the applications are really interesting for us because as a company, we like to have the application focus. So this is a 922FE. So this is for your general contracting. Yeah. We've got a 924FE DM for demolition spec. Right. So like you just mentioned, you could be running shears, selector grabs, um, pulverizers, etc. 
and we're also working on 924FE tunneling variants. Tunneling? Exactly. There's a there's a large demand for tunneling cool. machinery. So for yeah. that, we're looking at tilting cabs, etc. Yeah. And then a lot of the characteristics of the DM are very applicable for tunneling. And yeah. that's not it. That's not Ooh, it. Ooh, we've got more <laughs> surprises here. Yeah. We're also starting to receive requests for high-rise cab variants okay. for waste and recycling because for us that's a very very predictable gt cycle yes so we yeah. can work with that customer to get the runtime perfect for it yeah and the other thing is you know we've, we've got the first one of these machines now with flannery in the uk they're going to be getting it on site in anger the the machine was delivered just in time for hillhead and um, we all saw that on the stand and so it's going to be really interesting to see how the big can do things better and differently and how we can actually open up new applications and also give people the opportunity to, to run full shifts and even 24 hour shifts, you know, when you've got charging mechanisms and a great big container that's arriving here tomorrow, I, I, I hear, um, that can actually give 2.3 megawatts of power to, to run these for like two weeks. 100%. And what we're doing is we're working with our customers to let them get the most out of the machine. So say, for example, if we were to charge this on a 150 kilowatt yep. uh, charging facility, we could charge this in just over three hours <laughs> with, a, uh, with some of the units available. So we're, we're, making, we're making it work and we're helping our customers to find what suits them as well. Well, it's a good job I picked green for my team because I love winning, James. Commiserations, but it's uh, all in the good spirits of going green with the BV experience I've had here. Cheers, folks, and thanks, James. Thank you.